Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we are doing an Ida X listener falling upon request, because I wanted an Ida one. Um, trigger warning, suicide attempt, if you might get triggered from it, please leave this video immediately, I don't want to risk any of your mental health. This one's a short one. Um, also, for my people on the Discord, and if you want to, you can join the Discord, but for my people on the Discord, I'm probably not going to be able to go on to the voice chat today, as I have a ton of homework that I need to do, and I always save all of the schoolwork throughout the entire week to do on Friday, <laughs> on Friday and Saturday, but yeah, just so you guys know, you guys can still go on it, but I'm probably not going to be able to join. Um, yeah, let's get to it. Everything was just so stupid now. All everyone ever told you was lies. Upon- were lies upon their feelings, upon friendship, upon everything. Around two weeks ago, your now ex-boyfriend of around three years just broke up with you. And it wasn't a, it's not you, it's me. No. He gave you a long, long list of why he wanted to break up officially. He insulted you in every way he possibly could, and it was heartbreaking to you to find out you were so bad in your relationship with him. Not to mention, he had been texting you nonstop, bothering you and telling you to go kill yourself. You couldn't see from how long you had been crying. This was your chance to end all of the messages being sent to you. To end all. You couldn't take it anymore. Your feet carried you to the top of the UA building. It was higher than the dorms. You shook as you walked over to the edge of the building, your mind bringing you back to the people who cared for you. Hey, everything's going to be alright, Wyan. Things will pass between you two, I promise. Uraka, you don't understand the full story. He follows me when I go over town and texts me these awful things. Ida leaned over and pulled you into a hug. You rested your head on his chest softly and started to cry. We are going to block the number, Shoto exclaimed as he took your phone from the table and blocked the contact. You could see he was angry and Shoto was never angry over these situations. You are fine, Wyan. I'm sure the things he said weren't true, Ida said as he hugged you even tighter than before. Then Araka came over and so did Midoriya and gave you a big group hug. Even Shoto came over and hugged you as well. You smiled slightly at their efforts, but you knew it couldn't fix this. It couldn't fix the situation you were in with him, and you knew he wouldn't leave you alone. As time passed, he got new numbers and texted three times as much as what he did before, calling you, showing up to taunt you. Of course, the group told him off several times, but that wouldn't stop the pain he had brought to you. He even took it as far as coming to the dorms with a fake present and there was a loaded gun inside. He was taken into custody for that, but was soon released from a fake story he told and the misery soon stirred up again for you. Your eyes wandered to the ground for anyone around you. Luckily, there was no one in your sights. You sighed and you wiped the tears and set both feet on top of the edge. You sighed as you turned your back so you wouldn't watch the ground come closer towards you. You sighed as you pushed yourself off the edge. You were right in Sir ex-boyfriend's name. I should have killed myself. Maybe earlier than this, you muttered to yourself as you fell, feeling as though it was endless until you hit the ground. You were half tempted to just turn around to make sure you weren't in a dream, but as you thought you were close to the end, you felt a pair of arms wrap around your body and prevent you from hitting the ground. I've got you, Lion, you heard Ida say as he held you close to him. Him and his stupid quirk. He could have seen you from a mile away and would have been able to save you from your wanted demise. 
Nikita, please let go, you sobbed into his chest as he held you. But he didn't let go. He cupped your cheek and pecked your lips softly, resting his forehead against yours for comfort. Why would you do this to yourself? You have so much to live for. I don't know what I would have done if I found you dead. I don't know what I would have done if you were gone. I couldn't live with myself, he just said as he sobbed into his chest. He really felt that way towards you? After all this time, you have never noticed how close he was towards you. You two were basically best friends. Why haven't you realized this? I'm sorry, Ida. I just can't take him anymore. But this isn't the way. The right way is going to the police, getting a new phone, and telling you way about him. So they will be extra careful. I'm here for you, okay? I'll make sure he never touches you or texts you these hurtful things ever again. Just please promise me you won't try to end your life anymore. You have so much to live for. He sighed as he looked into his eyes. Okay, I promise, Ida. That's the end. It was cute at the end. Um, I hope this, got, this helps some of you guys out if you're going through rough times. A COVID-19 hug. <laughs> Internet hug. But anyway, I hope you all have a great rest of the day. Get your schoolwork done, all of that stuff. And I'll see you all next time.